Yay! Yeah! I don't know why I'm clapping. Because <laughs> this is the worst movie of the year. Apparently. Apparently, chat. Um, What did YouTube's boy KP back with another video? We got The Crow, the worst movie of the year. The trailer came out five months ago, so I don't know what this is about. Um, Y'all let me know in the comments. Inform me. Educate me. Because I love learning. And I love being a sponge. I like I love soaking the water, the water. You know what I'm saying? Pause. That, that sounded so wrong. But I love soaking knowledge. You feel what I'm saying? All right. Make sure you like We keep it real deal holy field chat. So if I say it's bad, I think it's bad. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you know what I mean? So make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you're new, join the crew. Let's see what I do with a do chat. Every once in a while, I get an attack of the galloping crazies and almost manage to convince myself that remakes can be a good idea. Cape Fear, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Fly, and Battlestar Galactica were all big improvements over the originals, taking great concepts that were once limited by technology, budget, or restrictive censorship, and producing much better realizations of the original artistic vision. That's nice and everything, but here's the thing. I would happily trade all of those just to wipe 2024's The Crow from my brain and pretend that it never existed. That film was two solid hours of pointless, boring, dreary, bleak, unimaginative, unlikable, self-inflicted misery. A the movie came out already? It's, it's in theaters right now? completely soulless, corporatized, modern-day rehash that makes a mockery of the source material, fails to understand any of the themes or characters that made it so iconic, and completely fails to recapture the magic of the 1994 original. In short, it's a- Oh, they remade the movie. Okay. So what made this movie so bad? perfect example of all of the most depressing tendencies of modern remakes, and a solid contender for the worst movie of the year. Anyway, let's get the plot summary over with so that we can all get the hell out of here. The movie begins- What is he- It's given Joker and Batman had a baby. That's what it's given right now, I ain't gonna lie. Cause what is this? Anyway, let's get the plot summary- over with so that we can all get the hell out of here. The movie begins not with Eric Draven as you might expect considering he's supposed to be the protagonist of the fucking movie, but with Shelly, future corpse and revenge motivation. In this case however, she's a drug addicted former prostitute. Okay. Yeah, quite the catch. All right. I don't think I'd be coming back from the dead for this girl. Anyway, whatever. Shelly's forced to go on the run from a local crime lord named Vincent after one of her friends sends an incriminating video to her. One of Vincent's what men- What the yeah, this is bad. Yeah, this is, this is. I'm already a minute in. I'm already a minute in. I think it's bad. It's after her, so she employs some big brain thinking and bumps into a pair of cops so that she can get arrested for drug possession. Now, call me crazy here, but couldn't you have just told them what was happening and asked for help? I mean, generally, cops tend to be pretty sympathetic to young women that claim they're being stalked by some crazy mobster guy. Ah, whatever. So Shelley gets sent to a rehab center, which for some reason allows male and female inmates to mingle freely. Hey, at the end of the day, he got his bag. But did he really, though? ...together, because that's definitely not going to result in all kinds of assaults and unwanted pregnancies. Are you serious? Hit her! And that is where she meets and befriends Eric, an absolute pussy that gets bullied and victimized by practically everyone in the place. Anyway, when Vincent's right hand, uh... Woman shows up looking for Shelly, they're forced to escape together. Because Eric knows exactly how to get out of there, which kind of makes you wonder why he's never escaped before now, but whatever. So they get out and they start a relationship together, and this is where the movie goes from borderline tolerable to completely tedious. The next 30 minutes or so are nothing but a series of excruciating dates and weirdly protracted love scenes between a completely unlikable pussy and a woman with all the charm and appeal of a greasy doner kebab that's been lying on a stone cold pavement 
comment all night. And do not ask me how I know that. We've all done things we're not what proud of, okay? <laughs> Thankfully though, Vincent's goons eventually show up and put the two of them out of my misery, only for Eric to get resurrected by this weird arsehole named Kronos, who demands that he kill Vincent. See, it turns out this, that Vincent bro? made a deal with the devil to live forever, and Kronos isn't too happy about it. So if Eric can kill him, then he'll get Shelly back, and the two of them can live happily ever after. I want to I wanna leave this video right now, I'm not going to lie to you. But go on. Yay. Now, you might think after all this tedious bullshit that it's finally- So was this guy a superhero or what? I'm confused. Anti-villain, anti-hero, like what is he? I'm confused. Only crow in time, but nah, Eric's still a useless pussy who cries all the time. The only difference is that he can't die now and any injuries heal up within seconds because he's powered by love or something. <laughs> Jesus, what is this, a Disney movie? Anyway, despite all these supernatural advantages, he still manages to fuck up to such a degree that even Kronos gives up and tells him to piss off because Shelly's getting sent to hell now. Oh no! Anyway- But then he's like, nah, I'll take her place, and then he comes back again as the actual crow this time, after about 90 minutes of the kind of blue balling that would make Tatiana look like an absolute amateur. Then there's a very long and tedious fight scene and he eventually kills Vincent because oh it turns out that an immortal, unkillable demon ninja with superpowers- So I'm conf- <sighs> Let me guess. <laughs> Sony directed this movie. Let me guess, bro. Let me take a guess here. Bro, Sony needs to retire, bro. Pack it up, Sony. If this is so dude, if this is Sony Entertainment, bro, they have to make the worst movies known to man. I swear to you. I swear to you, bro. Madam Webb, The Amazing Spider-Man was horrible. And then everybody was like, oh my gosh, like, yay, like. We love him, like, hey. But then, you know what I'm saying? Because the character is so iconic, they felt bad for him, I feel like. I don't know. I don't know. Versus a 60 year old man isn't quite the epic matchup that you think it is. So Eric gets sent to hell instead, and Shelly gets resurrected on the night that she died, which means none of this ever happens? I don't fucking know. Anyway, that's it. That's the plot for The Crow. You know, I'm struggling to think of any remake that missed the point of the original quite as spectacularly as this movie. The 1994 original was a dark, gothic, urban fairy tale centered around a tragic protagonist driven by his quest for revenge beyond the grave. There was a kind of haunting beauty to be found in the stylized, dilapidated cityscape he lived in. There was a bittersweet undertone to Eric's violent quest for vengeance, underscored by little moments of humanity and kindness, and the tentative relationships he tried to form along the way, knowing that they could never last. And the script showed you just enough to let you understand his supernatural nature, but restrained enough to hold back and keep a lot of things ambiguous and mysterious. It was actually a very thoughtful, well-balanced and well-made movie that was way ahead of its time, and aside from some janky visual effects, still holds up pretty well even today. The remake, on the other hand, is just a grimy, violent, depressingly bleak and empty exercise in stupidity. There's no soul to this film and no point to it. It feels like a movie made to order, assembled from stock ingredients to retain the IP rights or fill a release quota, instead of some passion project that anyone was particularly driven to make. The decision to focus so much of the narrative on Shelley and Eric's relationship is probably the first and biggest misstep, but it's definitely not the last. Shelley was never really important as a character in the original movie. In fact, she was already fucking dead when the film opens, and we only really get to see her in a couple of brief flashbacks. And you know what? That's perfect for a film like The Crow, because it's Eric's love for Shelley and his quest for revenge. Yo, I, you know what I feel like, chat? You know what I feel like? I feel like the only character in movies, bro, that came back, like Spider-Man, let's, let's say, for example, right? You wouldn't, ha you wouldn't have thought, oh, Tom Holland is going to be better than or arguably better than the first Spider-Man, right? And when you remake these characters, it's hard, it's hard to be the, the guy, right? But Tom Holland has done that. I feel like every other movie, bro, you just can't do it. Like, The Crow had an original movie. You should have just kept it how it was. Superman had one Superman. should have kept them how it was. Now you keep, remaking, you keep remaking Supermans thinking it's going to be good. And it just hasn't been good, bro. It just hasn't. It hasn't been good. You know what I mean?
I feel like they're trying to do this here, and it just it's not working. It's just not working. It's just not working, bro. Revenge that drives the narrative, rather than Shelly as an actual person. She's a symbol for doomed love, lost innocence, and missed opportunities. The Shelly in this movie, though, is kind of overbearing and annoying. She always takes the lead in every situation, while Eric follows her like a lost puppy. She spouts the kind of cringe dialogue that feels like it was written by an edgy 13-year-old Tumblr author, and having her played by some fucking R&B singer who's never acted in anything before was a bold choice, Cotton. It just didn't pay off for anyone, though. Eric, on the other hand, comes across as a complete pussy who spends most of the movie crying and sulking, and he's played by a horribly miscast Bill Skarsgård. I mean, Brandon Lee was always going to be a tough act to follow, and it's not like Skarsgård is a bad actor generally, but he feels lost in a role that doesn't seem to know what it wants from him. Mm. He's got no chemistry. So what I'm saying is that it's directors, bro. Directors play a huge, huge part in how the movies don't go. Directors failed. They failed. Shelly, he kind of meanders through the bulk of the movie like he's ashamed to be there, and he only really seems to come alive during the fight scenes. Yeah, the movie's definitely gory and violent, which is always nice to see, but it feels perfunctory instead of meaningful. There's no emotional release as Eric takes revenge on the people who destroyed his life. It's just a guy going through some highly choreographed action scenes because he can. Danny Houston is another talented actor delivering another adequate performance in a role that doesn't really deserve him. Michael Wincott's top dollar from the original movie was a fucking brilliant antagonist, menacing and eloquent and cool, but Vincent just feels bland and forgettable by comparison. Ultimately, the question I keep asking myself about The Crow is, why was this movie even made? Who was it made for? And what did they even expect to get from it? The Brandon Lee movie was about as good as a film like this is ever going to get. You're not going to improve on it, and you're not going to add a different perspective by rehashing the same story again, so... Why bother? I don't know, and I don't care. But if you really want to revisit the Why does he talk like that? But I don't know, and I don't care. The story of Eric Draven, then go and watch the 1994 version and pretend that this pile of shit never existed. Anyway, that's well, all I've got for today. Hey chat, I just saved your life by not watching this movie. Like, I, I'm sure I wasn't going to watch it anyways, but I just, I just, I just, I just saved y'all. Don't go to the theater and watch it, chat. It looks complete dog water. It's complete dog water, bro. I, from just looking at it, I could tell it was dog water. I didn't get excited watching this, so I'm not going to get excited for the movie. You feel what I'm saying? What the hell is even a crow? Is it a bird or something?